Hello, folks. Hey, hi. Posted the meeting notes into Zoom chat. If you have any items you'd like to talk about. No, I left the, um, on Lucina, I did the uh, status discussion. I think it'd be good to go through that and also um, maybe touch on the CNS as well as we're we on the call, but on um, the conformance testing as well. All right. Um, and I'd be happy for you to join the, we do have a weekly CNF meeting on Thursdays that's Ooh. focused on the CNF testbed and CNF conformance, if, if you'd what like to time, join us. What time is that, uh, Pacific time? Was that the one which was uh, 8 o'clock or mm -hmm. something like that on Thursdays? Um, yeah, I'm going to grab you the meeting notes here. All right. So that's um, 1415 UTC or 715 AM Pacific. OK, so yeah, that should be OK, UK time. OK. Yeah. And that meeting is focused specifically on the test bed and conformance. Yeah, I wasn't sure if actually that had been collapsed with the um, uh, telco user group or not, or if it was kept as a separate invite. That's why I got confused. Yeah, the, um, the telco user group you could think of as more of like a traditional user group. So mm -hmm. it's where um, you, people can bring problems and concerns or when we're talking about like gap analysis and stuff. So mm -hmm. what are, what's, what's missing from the software that we've been shown and the, the test bed <coughs> is, um, in some ways you could think of it as like a reference implementation, but on a very, maybe a, it's not trying to be as opinionated on, on picking a specific set of software because we want to make it where anyone can plug in whatever options they want. So if, if you're trying different network plugins, there's a lot of different options. Or, okay, understood. Yep. The, the conformance will be about the testing. So yep. they all work together, but they're, they're separate. Hi, Denver. Yeah. I'm not saying Ed, and this was the one item that's actually listed here is. Was yeah, his. I, I had put that. I had put that the meeting before that had been canceled. So, um, and that had been put back here as as Ed. So, but I don't know if he's planning to join or not. All right. Well, I did um, try to reach him on Slack on the packet and CNCF Slack, but I haven't heard from him. So, could um, do you, do you have? Um, could you talk through a little bit on on any further work happening on CNCF CI or what activity there's been there? Or, or sure. And I guess maybe to a, a step back a little bit and then I'll mm. get back into CNCFCI. So ideally this whole meeting, what we would be talking about um, on these group meetings, and maybe I don't know if it should be a working group or a user group or, or what, but the idea would be any type of CI um, 
technology or work that we could share ideas that would be useful across any of the CNCF projects um, and not specific to the CNCF CI dashboard. Okay. So when we're talking about this, it's, it's one effort, but as you're aware, there's a lot of efforts, different projects for doing their own CI, which mm -hmm. is a separate type of thing. And that could be anything from <clears throat> make, if you're thinking working group, are we trying to come up with solutions that would help the projects directly or um, just sharing best practices and stuff across the group. So if there's anything from your end that's interesting and could be shared, then that would be good. And I would like to push the group to be more towards that versus a stat. It's not really a status update for this. I know that that's kind of been where it, where it is, but I think it's mainly because we haven't had people bringing up other topics. Okay, that's good. And, and from my angle, it's really more for how we can encourage or have more of the cloud native projects having some element of CI or validation on ARM or multiple architectures overall and, and uh, how we enable that to happen. So on the ARM side, we've, we've worked with a number of the CI, CI company and frameworks to actually provide access to resource or get them to operate on ARM platforms as well. But I think the intent is, is predominantly to really uh, enable projects to uh, work seamlessly across architectures, whichever they are. Sounds good. And I, I think as far as the multi-arc, that's going to probably apply in many places. So it mm. does apply to this, of course, um, yeah. this initiative. and then there's all sorts of stuff within just the Kubernetes uh, testing communities. Mm. I saw today um, someone talking about the multi-arc image support for Prowl and making that more available for testing. So I know those communities are looking at that. I, d I didn't say it was specific to ARM, but I know there was the desire for the multi-arc images to be made available in other places. Um, so that's, I think there's probably many different communities for you to come and talk to on that. Yeah. But with regard to ARM and um, just being more independent of architecture for the CI, if y'all have anybody on, on your side that could talk about that and best practices and maybe this could be a place for that. So if we say, hey, next month, we're going to have someone from ARM talk about multi-arc support and we could get it pushed to all the different, you know, if, if it sounds like something you could do and you'll have someone internal, we could maybe push it out to all the CNCF projects. Um, that'd be something I need to reach out to some of the community people. but. Yeah, and I did mention the Bazel work, which has happened over the past month on the uh, Slack. So that's yeah, I saw that. Is, Thank you. So that that's really should that's it is something I know has been um, an issue for quite some time, and that should be a uh, one less blocker for enabling other things. And there is work around Envoy, which is coming together as well. So that in terms of CI, so that's something you will I'll be able to uh, to uh, pass along as well and communicate here too. All right. Um, well, I'll try to address maybe some of the CNCFCI stuff and then happy to talk offline. And um, Chris, I don't know if, uh, Patterson, if you have any items that you'd like to talk about. Uh, uh, no, I, it's the first time I've been here to attend. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Um, just as some background, I'm the product manager for GitHub Actions. Oh, okay. Um, so, awesome. Um, so I was interested in what's going on in this working group. And obviously, if there's ways we can help, um, yeah, something I'm, I'd love to talk about, um, you know, whether it's 
you know, we obviously provide a lot of free infrastructure and we've had some conversations at least with the Kubernetes community around Prowl, but um, yeah. yeah. So um, that could be interesting and, and maybe if we can find a, a way to show it a relevant way to fit in with the CNCF projects and that would be a topic that we could um, yep. communicate. Yeah. It, it is something from the, so I, I'll just refer to it as a dashboard. So this CI dashboard, which is mm -hmm. its own initiative. And um, it, if you're not familiar with this, uh, just a quick overview. The idea with this is to have, uh, and this project is currently in kind of a maintenance mode, looking at a, a refresh, what, where are we gonna go from here? But the idea is for the, primarily the CNCF incubating and graduated projects, although looking at some other projects, how to have a quick view of their most recent stable release as well as the latest commit on um, their master branch or their head mm -hmm. on it. Right now it's a daily basis. So whatever it was, it's a snapshot view of mm -hmm. what's the status. So it's be kind of like going to every project and do they have build badges and other stuff. But we split these out so that we can talk about, is it building? Is it, what does it look like for deployment? And then when we're doing this, we're actually saying with the test environment, we're saying looking at the latest stable Kubernetes uh, that we're supporting in the environment and the latest head. Um, and then some type of combination of architecture and potentially other run times. Uh, we had Docker at one point right now, it's just container day. Okay. And then saying, so if, if you look at the way these, it f kind of flips between those. So if, and there was a point where we had some E to E tests, but part of this has to do with working with the, the projects to get something that's it's relevant. And then it would mm -hmm. be the full set so it's a quick like view of where the projects are and then you get links back into the projects. And of course they can do more extensive stuff and Prometheus does a lot of scalability things, mm -hmm. um, which would be more extensive than what we're doing. But it's, it's just another view of, of, of what um, this, the health of projects are. Um, so one tying into where things are to answer Philippe on where things are and where it's going. So it, it is in maintenance and we are trying to keep versions updated and, and other things, but we're looking at where does, where do we want to go with this? And the, the whole project is built in a lot of different pieces. There's a, well, there's the pipeline underneath and that mm -hmm. could be any different thing, but it happens to be based on, on GitLab, mm -hmm. the different pipelines. Um, sources pulled upstream at one point builds um, were all done internal so like and some of them still are so builds would be tested so this was about validating things external to whatever the project did and they were actually rebuilt the binaries create the artifacts and then push them out um, the recent projects instead of doing that what we've done is we have integrations to whatever CIs uh, they're running. And mm -hmm. I think one of them that would be a valid new one, I think is, um, well, I, c I can't recall. Denver, you may recall which one is moved to GitHub Actions and was on Travis. So now all of the, the integration, is it? I don't think it's the Etsy day. Do you recall Denver? You're muted. Okay, so um, i get, get back to that in a moment. So the, the idea with this move that we've had started to do and, um, and had gone forward before going into kind of a maintenance mode to decide what we want is to integrate with the pipelines from projects. 
-hmm. And if we look at like this as an example, so they're tough and the tests, at least at the time, several months back, they didn't have any arm CI. Mm -hmm. So that's why these are all NA on that. Mm -hmm. And um, they may also have failures because of the other reasons, but, but that would be one of the things. So the idea with this would be to encourage and help the projects to get um, all their builds publicly available so that you have public information so that you can see that the actual binaries are building and passing all of the tests. And then the next part is, and this is a, a another level of difficulty is ensuring that the projects publish artifacts, at least for releases, which most are going to do in a way that you can say have a Docker image. But ideally, they also publish artifacts for their master builds on you know, at least some of them, like Kubernetes has 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 them for every commit. And then multi-arc, they do it for some. So we're able to get those. If they can publish them, then you can test all of these different things. And so you're, you're basically, what we end up with is a health status that's able to allow the projects to have autonomy and control over how they do the pipelines, but we help them get there. And then likewise for the test would be something similar, or the test may be something where they don't want to run the infrastructure for that, but they provide the actual test. So we're able to deploy the environment using their artifacts that they build and validate that they work on different versions of Kubernetes. And that's kind of where things were going. And part of this, as far as going to maintenance mode is to recheck on what parts are actually valuable to the different projects and then getting the community to getting to a place where the community can maintain a lot of their own things in a way that's good for them, each of the one of the projects, and we can contribute or collaborate on, on how all the pieces work and have right. enough contributions on that. And, and that's besides a little bit of the shift on what, um, was mentioned earlier with regard to other CNCF initiatives like the telecom efforts. Mm -hmm. um, um, the projects, all of it, the software is on uh, this cross cloud CI, which is the, the base org. And there's a lot of different <clears throat> repositories under there. Um, the dashboard is its own thing that gets deployed and the Behind that is what's called the status repository. This is what's pulling all the information in about all the projects. And each one of the projects have their own configuration that tie in and say point to the project and say what architectures they support and stuff like that. And, uh, Prometheus doesn't have the external CI information, but um, let me see if I can find them real quick. Uh, CN, uh, CNI configuration does, says Travis CI. As What's that? CI system. The CNI configuration repo. Just oh, yeah. To click on. Oh, you know. I don't think we have that one enabled, but um, well, that I mean, would I'm be just looking at the, it's got, it happens to have like, a C, here we go. Well, this one's listed CI system right here. Yeah. Right. Right, so that this would be an example of the external CI. So that's actually part of this CI proxy that we have mm -hmm. that integrates and pulls information back. Um, so the GitHub Actions is mm -hmm. one of the integrations um, that we were doing. And we actually have a test project that has some support for GitHub Actions. So the part of this was waiting, when is a CNCF incubating or graduated project gonna fully move over? And a lot of them were doing a split type thing between different CI systems for quite a while. And 
I believe that there's a couple of the projects that we were supporting, and I think we may have actually disabled one recently, <clears throat> uh, that have moved over. So I, this would be, is if it's valuable to move forward, then let's do it. And then part of it would be contributors to, to help with the maintenance of, of these type of things, like mm -hmm. maintenance of the project. We're trying to push as much external. So if you looked at like, what this is right here, essentially this is something where potentially Linkerd2 could host this similar to this file, similar to how they would have a GitHub, a GitHub folder with the different mm -hmm. configuration. Um, we have our own GitLab, which is our pipelines, but that's a separate, because this is really part of the overall system. Yeah, that's interesting. So I guess I'm trying to like, do you, I guess part of what it seems like you've been trying to do is provide infrastructure, which is interesting. Now, is there any, anything you're trying to do around validation or a, a sort of some sort of official statement, or is it just like, Hey, if you don't have CI, we'll help you get it set up. Um, so I'm trying to kind of understand, or is it really just this, Hey, you've got CI, we, we can help validate that you meet, you know, give us your test suite in some sort of standardized way and we'll run it against uh, some subset of Kubernetes repos or, or versions. There's been a lot of different goals and those have changed as far as this dashboard. Um, Denver was one of the few founding members on that, but when it was started more than three years ago now, um, part of it would be trying to give visibility to the CNCF projects. Um, there was some initial goals of uh, more like focusing on interoperability and how do we do that and tie these all together was part of that. And <clears throat> there's still some possibilities in that, especially if we externalize things. But when you were building it all together and saying, we're gonna have all of these things running in the same environment and we're gonna do all the builds for all the versions, the matrix of uh, how things all fit together in different versions. You could say stable Envoy and FluentD, but everything else is gonna be on the develop branch. Well, it starts getting more and more complex on that. So yep. that kind of shifted away as far as goals, although it's more there if we say it's focused on the testing and you don't have to do these because these are external. Mm -hmm. But so marketing, um, tying in, like pushing, like how do, what are these looking like? These are CNCF projects that you could mm -hmm. see that and the health of this, how they work with Kubernetes and different mm -hmm. versions and if things are broken. So if you say, mm -hmm. and we've seen that, so we've seen like a head version of mm -hmm. Kubernetes and different projects start failing. Um, so yeah. some of those were the goals. And then it's not really about providing the resources at this point and that kind of shifted very early on to say we're gonna provide CI for the projects uh, because of the CI needs. Prometheus, like I said, needed massive scaling, um, mm -hmm. but TESS needs its own type of thing with the heavy hits on, on the storage side and the mm -hmm. different extensions. Mm -hmm. So that moved away. I think at this point, if you were looking at what the working group, which would be separate from the dashboard. So the dashboard is not the working group. From the working group side, what's still listed, if you go look at the CNCF um, SIGs and working group page, mm -hmm. is somewhat towards that. You could say helping CNCF projects. And part of that could be helping build their CI out. But that's somewhat spread across CNCF efforts. Like there is a, you can request for lab infrastructure. Now, that's separate from, do you actually have a CI system? Do you, is there a CI platform set up that's generic enough that's gonna meet all the needs of every CNCF project? That's a big undertaking. People have put stuff forward, but so far, I don't, I don't think anything is a perfect fit. 
I'm sorry. I, I think what would be more likely, Chris, is if we could say here's right now to, to rather than saying we're going to take it all on and solve all your problems with one thing would be providing a place for people to get started and have options that are easily available. So if they said, where can I run any of this? Well, there is CNCF. If you look at the CNCFIO on the community section, they have an infrastructure lab. Um, this is fine from a, a top level, but if we said from a working group side, we could probably group these and say, here's some places that you could run stuff. And then if we look at what are some CI pipelines that we could use, maybe if we had a section that talks about how you could use GitHub Actions along with whatever else people wanna do. And I know from the ARM side, there's, there's a lot of efforts on self-hosting as well as using hosted versions. But I, I think something like that could be used at a much higher level mm -hmm. to, to be useful across all CNCF projects. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that seems reasonable. Like, I, I don't know, it feels like, like if I sort of break this down, like, it, it I mean, in the end, everybody's artifact needs to be a container. Like how, however it is you get there, you get to a container. I, I think the, the part that you talked about that seems interesting, at least from a working group and like how the CNCF would support projects is that testing thing. And I think the dashboard's interesting. It's like, hey, it, the, the question though is how do we do it in a way where the working group is really doesn't have to build out, uh, infrastructure isn't the right word, but like, hey, you provide your tests in a uniformly consumable way. It's like, you know, you provide your deployment in a uniformly consumable way and your tests in a uniformly consumable way and we'll generate and run a pipeline across some set of versions of things and give you a green or a, a red based on what that is seems really interesting. The build part feels like, yeah, it could be there, but totally should be external. Like it doesn't make any sense in my mind for the a work, CI working group to be actually managing or providing anything about the pipelines. It's really more like, well, you do your build. There's lots of ways of doing that, um, you know, and, and the output is, yeah. your container in some place that we can pick it up. I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what you're talking about is, is where we were headed and what, you know, this is, I don't know what we call this Denver, the V2 or V3. I know there's internally, there's been so many revisions, but the next iteration of this is mm -hmm. what you're talking about, Chris, where mm -hmm. the pipelines are externalized and the, focus and we have a lot of design around the, the efforts that we did um, documentation on like what would artifacts look like mm -hmm. and this what you have right here is kind of a hybrid where we were essentially prototyping it so the pr external proxy part which is working um, we didn't expose this but you would uh, ideally the links like from tough wouldn't go to our system which is running it this is mm -hmm. what how do you actually run the software to gather it but instead the links would actually bring you directly to wherever TUF is which happens to our Vitesse I'm sorry I brought it Vitesse mm -hmm. and for Vitesse that happens to be Travis okay fine and then it you click another and it goes to you know get up actions you click another it goes somewhere else mm -hmm. so you could ideally click these and they go wherever they are and on ARM, it may be totally different. Maybe they have integrated and they're running it in the same CI pipelines, or maybe it's on a totally different system. That's fine. But the idea was to externalize that and send them out. And then yes, like what you're saying on the testing, if, if we have a good format where we can talk about that and core DNS, worked with us initially and was very interested in doing that. And Prometheus somewhat too, of 
what is the good format that we can provide our, our E to E test in? And the ones that we did run were in a container as far as those parts, but the main thing is describing the format and everybody can say, okay, we'll make sure you can start us up in the way that you say, then we'll handle the rest. As soon as we have that, we can pull those in and run them against the deployed artifacts. Um, you don't see it in these particular links, but we have other places where we did work. We're saying, how do we tie in the artifact from Vitess? And that would be the next, this if we go over to x86. So Vitess didn't do it. But if, if we look at like a, the another one, we say, where is the artifact? We found your build, it passed. Where is the actual artifact for that build that matches it exactly for the commit? So mm -hmm. we will deploy that into our environment. Then we're gonna run the set of E to E test and ensure that it passes. Okay. Yeah. And what, what this would be similar to is um, you can say Kubernetes, uh, E to, um, e to E test or the conformance test specifically, you can run Sonoboy on your own Kubernetes cluster and get the results, but you can go get the Kubernetes artifact that you want directly from Kubernetes. So that's the idea here is we're saying, we're gonna run it ourselves and make sure your stuff works on these different versions. These builds work with a deploy to Kubernetes and ensure all of those works. Beyond this, maybe we decide we would love to see core DNS um, work or Prometheus working with Kubernetes and Jaeger and all of these running together. But we do, it's complex enough that you, if you do it all internal, then it's, yeah. the maintenance of it is, is too much um, complexity and everything else. And that's, okay. that's why we're shifting over. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't have any great ideas right now, but that's interesting to know. Well, good to know they're still interested in it. <laughs> um, and I, I do think at the top level, if we can break down the different offerings and pieces, then the dashboard would just be one of those. So we say, we're not going to run your actual pipelines but we'll consume them and show how it works. But, and we'll also tell you best practices on how you should publish your artifacts as containers. Here's how you can do it. Here's some examples. Cause there are examples that you can yep. see out there on when they publish and how they show it. And there's also, uh, we'd also like to push CI systems that don't um, make it easy to communicate what artifacts were published with the pipeline because they don't all do that. Mm -hmm. So if, if you have a successful build and you create an artifact, it'd be nice to have that metadata in the pipeline. So if I come in and reference the actual pipeline, I can say, okay, what's your artifact? Oh, it's here. That relates all the way back to this commit. We're good. And then you can keep creating. So in the end, what you're talking about is, um, potentially confidence for someone else that says, I'm going to use Envoy and TUF and Vitess, and I'm gonna do it on ARM, and I wanna see how it all ties together with the different commits, builds pass, deploys pass, EDs pass, so that I know that my deploy of that combination into production as a customer is good. Okay. But we've gotta have the base systems and feel confident in those. Yep. That makes sense. All right. Um, well, if y'all would like to think about it and maybe we focus on something for a next call or something yeah. next month. Um, Ed, if you want to talk to anybody from the ARM side that wants to present on it, ARM items and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Philippe, that's not yeah. with us. And, um, and, from the arm side and then Chris, if I don't, I don't know what you want to talk about either from the GitHub side or I'd be, I think it would be really good to look at what type of CI 
I hate to say services because then people say they want to call up support and ask you to do something. That's not what we're really talking about, but what type of things can we help with as a working group mm -hmm. that would be useful? Okay. Yeah, that's a good, I'll think about that some. I mean, I, I, there might be some, based on what, you, like, I, I like your ideas there. I mean, I think that some best practices, some examples of how to use different things. And it's the other side. I mean, I, I really like the idea of like, a, the dashboard is interesting because it's, it's kind of for the projects, but it's also for customers of the projects. It's as much, you know, in my mind, both of those things, because if that is a reliable source of some amount of compatibility, you know, centralized compatibility and viewport testing that customers rely on, then, you know, it also incentivizes the projects to, you know, make sure their stuff is in good shape. Um, so might be another way to look at it. Uh, absolutely. That's a good way to view it. So, all right. Yeah. Like I said, it's my first time here. So I just kind of trying to understand the lay of the land and what the working group is trying to do. And you're obviously happy to help think about ways that, you know, um, action GitHub can help out. So sounds good. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Well, um, Unless there's anything else, I think we could end here and, and decide on next time. And we'll update a section for adding agenda items if anyone wants to put them for the next call. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, bye.